Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Maria Quiroz, the Interim Manager for the Small Business Development Department. I'd like to welcome you all to the San Diego International Airport first virtual Meet the Primes event 2020. Most of you remember that last year we were at Baboa Park and had over 60 exhibitors and nearly 500 attendees. This year is definitely different, but we still wanted to provide small businesses the opportunity to outreach and connect with Prime. For any business new to meet the Primes, the objective of our, our event is not only to present the industry prime contractors, but also to provide resources to help small businesses become successful, to learn about opportunities, resources, and valuable information that can help elevate your business. With that said, I wanna welcome Clark Construction, who is our presenter, for today. Welcome, Eric, and thank you for your participation. Please introduce yourself. Hi, my name is uh, Eric Balmarez. I'm outreach manager with Clark Construction. I have been with Clark for seven years now, uh, helping small businesses, including minority, uh, veteran-owned, hub zone, and disabled veterans, uh, Build capacity, one, and two, the most important thing to you all is uh, getting contracts with Clark on some of our uh, small to larger iconic projects. Next slide, please. Who is Clark? You have seen our signs uh, throughout all of Southern California. If you've traveled to San Francisco to Seattle, over to the East Coast, you will see our prominent signs all over. We're iconic for the blue and the white lettering with Clark Construction. As you see on this slide, one of our subsidiaries, our sister company is Atkinson, and they do all the freeway construction. We were founded in 1906. We have been in the Western region now for 25 years. Our first office, um, was in Costa Mesa and we have been uh, here now for 25 years. We are privately held American owned company and we have a little over 3,500 employees. And as of right now, um, including the year 2020, in spite of all the challenges that we have all faced as a country and as a globe, uh, we are holding state about 5 billion in annual volume. So that's a good uh, solid testament to the foundation of the company how solid we are and the opportunities uh, to all the small businesses out there in the greater San Diego market. Next, please. So who, what else does Clark bring to the table? We have strong relationships with local and national owners. Some of the uh, local owners in San Diego are the universities in the education sector. We have San Diego State University, UCSD, and also uh, with the San Diego Unified School District. That is one of our goals to uh, get in there and start building some of these K through 12 schools. But we do have strong relationship with SDSU, uh, the GSA, the government. Those of you who have gone over to Tijuana May for a quick weekend or have spent some time on the border, we have an active project Otay Mesa and we just finished about a year and a half ago, we finished the uh, Port of San Isidro phase three. We have a long history of award-winning projects. We have the Padre Stadium, which is iconic to San Diego, our border project. And our goal is to one day work with also Marie and her team as far as um, expanding the International San Diego Airport. And how does all this get done? Clark all the employees and all our associates, including our subsidiary, Atkinson, we are committed to executing a project, all of our projects on time and on budget. Next, please. Where is Clark Construction? Here we have a map that I was able to put together here. 
as you can see, we are spread throughout uh, the country and planning to expand um, areas such as Colorado, which has a, a booming construction market. But if you see these little hard hats there, we have in California, we have San Francisco, Irvine, and San Diego. And as you can see, we have a presence in Texas, Florida, but our main office is out of Bethesda, Maryland. Uh, otherwise, we also call it DC. As you see there, the, the pointer there. Chicago is a up and booming area for us where we have recently launched some special programs that I will talk about to build uh, subcontractor capacity. And then if you look over Renton in Washington, uh, we are doing a lot of good stuff there with the port on Washington State University and Seattle Pacific University. Uh, so any subcontractors that are interested in working up there, if you're not working up there now, I would be a good contact, um, at least through Clark, get you some contact as an avenue to get working up there. That, uh, that is also a booming market for construction uh, and for Clark. Next slide, please. Iconic Clark projects. So I specifically chose these four projects, starting on the top left, the LA Federal Courthouse. This was a project that started in 2013. It was completed around uh, the beginning of 2016. Those of you who have spent some time in downtown LA, you have seen this federal courthouse. Uh, one of the things that we're known for very well there is the small business goal was exceeded by 25%. Uh, so the GSA was very pleased with our commitment to small business. And that is how we were able to get recurring projects, federal projects, including those in San Diego, such as San Isidro and Otay. On the bottom left, there is the LES. Uh, we have done the Tom Bradley International Terminal. So those of you who enjoy, or will enjoy hopefully here soon, that uh, international travel. Uh, we're just trying to make LEX an iconic uh, airport within the next 10 to 15 years. The goal for LEX um, and Clark, we'd like to see it is have it be an international Heathrow, such as in London. Uh, we're, you know, away from that, but um, every project is getting us closer or getting uh, LAX closer uh, to the goal. On the right, uh, we may have some SDSU grads. We have SDSU engineering um, and disciplinary uh, sciences uh, building. As you see there, uh, they're repetitive clients for us. Uh, we have done, um, I think, two additional projects on SDSU. The good clients for us, and some of you have may even have attended some of our outreach events at SDSU. At the bottom right, we have SANDAC. We have East County Bus Maintenance Facility. This was a very competitive project. This was in 2014. Uh, SANDAC is coming out with more and more bids, um, and they've been highly competitive. And their, the DBE, Disadvantaged Business Enterprise Goal, is something that they measure and DBBE. So I thought I'd put these on there. So if you're ever interested in a project that is similar to this, I, again, I'm a good resource for you. Next, please. Additional project back in 2017, well, it's three years ago, but I specifically chose this. We have the Delta Enabling Project. The reason I showcased this, this was the largest project um, in the history of LEX uh, for shifting uh, airlines, Delta, Air Canada, and various others from one side of the airport to the other. It was a very complicated project uh, in addition to small business, women don't, and disabled veterans. We exceeded all the goals but impressively, uh, also the local workforce. We, their goal was 30%. We achieved 35% local workforce around the surrounding area. This is, again, is a LAWA requirement to make sure that we are bringing economic vitality and boosting the local economy and the surrounding cities by El Segundo. And then on the right, we have San Isidro Land Port of Entry Phase 3. This project, again, was very, very competitive, and a lot of the weight that fell on winning this job, obviously describing specifically how we were gonna build it, was the 
commitment to small businesses, the five federal certifications, small business, small disadvantage, veteran-owned, women-owned small business, and hub zone. Uh, we exceeded all the goals there uh, with the, the GSA, and we are, you know, we're very confident that that is what led us to win the OTI project that is currently on the border. Next, please. So now that I've showed, gave you a little bit of history of Clark Construction, how we started, who we are, what, we're, what our commitments are, is how do I get to work with Clark? These are some of the fundamentals that uh, are important to know and interested in working with us or continuing to work with us. As many of you have already worked with us on our previous project, we're signatory to the Southern California Conference of Carpenters and the Southern California District Council of Labors. So we have work with them hand in hand to make sure that we have uh, the credentials from carpenters and that we have the right workforce labors that we can dispatch to our jobs as needed. Uh, of course, we work with our subcontractors, all of you, to make sure that if there's a PLA, which is a project labor agreement, that we meet and exceed all the goals. So we work with generally a foreman from your team and we work with the unions to dispatch workers on our projects. Next, please. Working with Clark. I know many times subcontractors are quickly discouraged once they start seeing all that's needed, the requirement to work with a large general contractor such as Clark Construction. What is needed? Bonding, best rating, A minus or better underwriting limitation greater than 10 million. Bond cannot be greater than 80% of the underwriting limit. So those of you who have uh, attended a bonding class before, I know that there are several workshops that are held in San Diego. I daily highly recommend uh, attending the uh, Small Business Development Center. They have free seminars throughout the year. Um, obviously, unfortunately this year, everything has gone virtual. Uh, but I definitely highly recommend to take advantage of these opportunities and these free resources out there to help you understand the bonding process and what is needed for each general contractor. Because generally, I'd have to say if you're going to work with us, Pencil Phelps, Sun, they're going to have the similar bonding requirements, but it's good to be aware of the individual requirements for that particular general contractor. Insurance, just like every, everything else, you have insurance job-to-job -job basis to meet the requirements. I would definitely recommend uh, when you're pursuing a job, uh, get a hold of the purchasing manager or senior purchasing manager. They are the ones that internally within the organization are gonna have all the specifics on the insurance. They can refer you to specific insurance companies uh, to make sure that you are set up for success and you have the correct insurance and also the right amount of insurance to participate on the project. Financials, variance from other bidders uh, is their largest job, previous versus current backlog. So just like financials for your company as you handle your own personal finances, right? We all have to have budget and we have to have, you know, reserves, uh, surpluses uh, to back us up if when we're applying, for example, a car loan, this is exact same way. We need to know that you have the finances to back your project. You know, God forbid something happens on the job. You know, uh, it's Clark is at risk if a company goes under. And we want to make sure that no one goes under, that you're set up for success from the beginning, that you have the right bonding, that you have the right insurance and the fi financials. On the left here, you see a screenshot of Clark Construction. This is the SQA, Subcontractor Qualification Application Entry Form. How do you get there? It's at the bottom there, clarkextranet.com. So this is the very first step I encourage all of you, if you have not done so, is register an account, get a username, a password. Once you've done this, you're going to have to enter all your basic information your name, the name of the principal, if you are the principal, if you have a labor compliance person, bonding, insurance, finances. Once you enter all that information, 
an email is generated to our team to outreach and purchasing, we are then able to extract the information and acquaint you with a project manager, a senior project manager, or we may say, you know, thanks for the information, but you omitted some insurance information or some finance. We need to clarify what these are before we put you through the process because the last thing you want to do is put you through the process and a project manager comes through and says, there's an issue with such and such roofing. They don't have the insurance. Um, can you please go back to them? So we're trying to facilitate and expedite the process between outreach purchasing and the actual project team. So I would definitely, if you want to take notes or if you want to email me, I'll provide my email at the end of this presentation. I can email you this link. Next, please. Building subcontractor capacity. So this is an area, we call it the Clark Strategic Partnership Program on the right there. So we have a, a little outdated uh, uh, pamphlet there, 2016, 2017, but all the information is still the same. This program was created years ago uh, and it's a 10 month executive MBA style program where we spend 10 full months. It is a big commitment uh, for you all, as well as those of us who support the program at Clark. As you see a picture there, we have Wes Stiff. He's one of our senior vice presidents in Bethesda, uh, teaching our one of our DC classes. So here you see that room full. Here you have people who do roofing, masonry, concrete, drywall, any trade who are wanting to build capacity. Those are wanting to improve their capability statement or create one from scratch. And that's fine, that's what this class is for. In this 10 months, we cover bonding, insurance, licensing, licensing sorry, uh, project uh, management fundamentals. We also cover presentation classes, how to present yourself when you go to one of these, um, meet the buyers, for example, last October, you know, we, there was, it was a great event, super successful, and we had subcontractors and subcontractor come up to the Clark table and asking us questions about capability statements, how to get bonding, how to get insurance, uh, disclose some of the challenges that they're having, that they've been having. And so when they come up to the table, if you are specific and concise on what it is that you're needing help with, um, or just tell us what's going good. Some of, I've had people come to our table who've graduated from our class and they come to us and say, hey, thank you so much, Clark. Because of your project fundamentals out class, I was able to learn and jump these hurdles or uh, become further acquainted with other GCs. So this presentation class is trying to give you the tools, extra tools, if you need them to present. It, it, and also as a marketing piece where we help you uh, you know, create effective PowerPoint presentations if you're in front of a, uh, a GC and you're one of the top bidders on, on how to give you that competitive edge. You can go to clarksbp.com to find out more information on the program and also apply for the program. Uh, so we will, we just started a class. They will end in May, but at the beginning of June through July, we have an application period. We can go in and apply. Again, my contact information will be in a couple slides here. You can contact me, I can help you apply for the program. It is a competitive process where you have to not only just apply, but write part of the application process is submit a, a short essay as to who you are, what you wanna gain out of the program, and what are your ultimate goals with your company? Do you want to expand? Do you want to acquire additional credentials? or a combination, um, and I can help you. I can't write the essay for you, but I can help give you pointers on, you know, when we read these one by one, what's gonna give you that competitive edge uh, and increase your chances of getting accepted into the program. Next, please. Oh, here we go. Contact information. Um, again, I'm Eric Balmaris. I'm an outreach manager, uh, been with Clark seven years. I am in no way, shape, or form an expert um, in outreach, small business. I do consider myself knowledgeable um, and always open to learning. So, uh, and 
that's you know part of all of our career paths. So, you know, reach out to me because I learn from you all. You learn from me. Uh, you know, there's I don't think there's a single day that I have not learned something new, whether if it's challenges out there in the market or changes in requirements uh, from owners, um, or you know, or which sectors are doing better than the other. Whether it's aviation, is it education, is it healthcare? Uh, everything is vastly changing. In particular this year, right? 2020 has changed everything around so much, but what will be consistent regardless of you know, what's going on in the world is the ambition, the hustle, the dedication, and the commitment to growing your firm and working with large general contractors, that should not change. Stay committed, stay focused, stay dedicated, um, and stay, you know, continue to reach out to the Eric of the world, you know, Hensel Phelps, um, you know, we have uh, Stunt, uh, reach out to the outreach managers, the people who see uh, procurement and small business, they can give you more information as to what's happening within their company, what's changing, what's remaining the same. Uh, I would definitely stay in contact with them. I know it's challenging right now with COVID and, you know, pretty much everything gone virtual, but I, you know, hey, there's the phone, you can text, you can email them, starting with myself. Uh, keep the lines of communication open. That's going to definitely increase your chances of you know, being awarded work. That's just going to be quite honest with you, the consistency and the persistence. I provided my cell phone number there. Uh, feel free to call me, text me. It's a 702-306-0711. Uh, I receive text messages all, all the time, so I don't consider it unprofessional. Some people prefer to text over calling. Um, so there you have it. That is my presentation. I hope that it's given you some insight um, and some history as to who we are, when we were founded, how we're spaced throughout the country, our commitment. I showcased some of our iconic previous projects, some of the current projects. Um, for example, Ochai Mesa, we, there's a lot of opportunities still there. Reach out to me for that project. As we're, as we're playing with all the numbers on the five federal certifications to meet and uh, achieve and exceed those goals. Uh, there's opportunity at LAX project right now, the receiving station. Um, uh, please reach out to me there. Um, and there's also some additional projects that I personally do not support, but the senior outreach manager, Kim Billups, can give me the information on the trades that are available on our other LA projects that he oversees. At the top of my head right now, I cannot <laughs> think um, it's been an interesting two days, two days, but I can get you all that inform. I can get you all that information. And um, I thank you so much for taking the time to listen to me. And I will uh, go back to Maria uh, Kiro. Um, what questions do you have for me? Or are there specific topics you want me to add additional light or clarify? Hi, Eric. It's Maria Ibarra from Caltrans. I'm here for Q and A, and I we do have a couple of questions for you. Okay. Um, First of all, thanks for the great presentation from Eric Sidlicki. Uh, do professional service or design firms need to pre-qualify or what would be the best way to get involved on the design side of your projects? Okay, that is an excellent question. Uh, thank you so much for the question. And that came from Vicki? Came, came from Eric Sidlicki. Oh, Eric. Hi. Thanks, Eric. Um, thanks for the great question. So design firms and professional services do not need to fill out the SQA. I would send me a direct email, send me a direct email or call me and I can connect you with some of our uh, senior leadership within Clark who work directly with the design firms, both in San Diego and Los Angeles, uh, all, for example, on the design build job. Um, if whether you want to be the sole designer or you want to have a subcontract with the designer that Clark selected, we've seen those partnerships happen in the past and I've seen them happen on our current job. Give me a call and I can connect you with, her name is Kelly Olson, if you want to write that down. Um, she is one of our uh, directors of business development, but she would probably be the best person to direct you to uh, the process and how to get you engaged and involved um, on the design or professional service side. Thank you, Eric. 
Um, from Gia, I'm an electrical supplier. Does Clark have a registration for suppliers or vendors? For suppliers, you can actually, you can use the SQA, um, but it's not 100% needed. That one is a tricky one. That one I have seen suppliers go in there. Uh, and the reason uh, we have suppliers, we recommend them to go in there. When we're looking for suppliers, we can go in there and, for example, if we're looking for a supplier who has a veteran uh, certification, it'll pop up on your profile. But um, we suggest that more for traditional trades. Uh, you can do it. It's still helpful to look you up. That's more for lookup purposes. But I would recommend reaching out to me, uh, myself, or Ken Billup, and I can uh, email you. Once you email me, I can email you his contact information. Generally, what I do with suppliers, for example, at RSX, we currently um, – we needed a, a, an electrical supplier who was veteran owned. And so what I did is kind of went through my own history of files of electrical suppliers and then hooked, connected them directly with the subcontractor that need, had those needs so that they amongst themselves can conduct business. And then Clark ends up winning because we end up taking credit for the veteran owned as well. Thank you. But if you Eric. don't have a veteran owned, yeah, if you don't have a veteran owned certification, don't say, oh, I'm not going to get work. No, that, I'm, that was just one example of where I was able to connect the dots, but nope, feel free to reach out. Okay. Uh, from Chris, does Clark post their bid opportunities on their website or elsewhere like Planet Bids? We do not post them on our website. That is something that we have thought about and contemplated due to um, non-disclosure agreements that we signed with, for example, Disney, Universal. It's gotten a little tricky, right? But not every job has, you know, NDAs on them. Uh, what, we're tr what we're gearing for and using more is building connected. So once you connect with us and you've done the SQA, if you want an open opportunity, what happens is when you are, when we deem you qualified for a project, your scope of work, we will automatically sync you to Building Connected and Building Connected will then send you an, an invite and ask you, are you interested in bidding on this job or not? Once you respond, if you respond yes, then we connect you with a trade manager, an engineer, and have, have you work directly with them. So right now, the answer to your question would be Building Connected. So those of you who have not used Building Connected or do not have a profile, I highly recommend it's free. Go on buildingconnected.com, create a profile, because when you create a profile, it's a universal profile, meaning Clark can connect you to a project, Hensel Phelps can connect you to a project, Suns can connect you to a project if they're using Building Connected themselves. So it makes it very easy um, to connect you to the project. And it's really what we're trying to do is uh, kind of make the industry a little more universal and easier and expedite the time between you saying, yes, I'm interested and in getting you a contract. Thank you, Eric. Um, from Scott, how do architectural signage and digital wall covering providers get into the bid solicitation process? That one's going to be um, just like the design one. That's going to be more of a direct contact with myself and Kelly Olson uh, from Clark Construction. So definitely make note of my contact information. I can connect you with uh, Kelly Olson. Um, those discussions are kind of held a little more privately and independently, not that there's nothing to hide, just because the process is a little different from a traditional scope of work um, in the construction industry. Send me an email and I will connect you. I can do a soft introduction with Kelly Olson and she can better direct you with the project teams who have those specific needs. Perfect. And from Robert Neville, is there a prequal? application or department we can contact and is there a fee for the application class and where do they need is this is this is this it, uh is talking about the application to work with clark or the application for the program robert if you can add on to the chat to further explain your question Oh, it is the class. Right. The app. <clears throat> so, uh, excellent question. I should have covered this, but now you can help me cover this. It's free. It's Clark sponsored. The entire program 
is completely free. Clark pays the materials for the class, the time of everyone who obviously teaches the course. We have season project managers. We have our safety guy come in, our marketing director come in. Uh, there is no fee for the application or the class. The only cost involved is those who are selected. Um, we ask if it's a late Thursday night. It's, we're all hungry by the time it comes, 5.30, 6 o'clock. It's been a long day. It's each contractor, depending on how many we admit, at least twice, about twice we'll have to provide dinner for the class in that 10 month period. So we're, you're probably looking at about $400 maybe max, about, it'll, depending on what you get, we're not expecting you to go get, you know, super expensive fancy food, but if you buy pizza sandwiches, we see anywhere from like $175, $200, so you multiply that times two, that's the only financial commitment there is, is that you supply dinner, and we rotate that, so everyone else is, um, has to buy dinner as well. Okay, I believe that is all for the questions, and I will pass it on to Maria Q from the airport. Maria. Thank you, Maria Guevara. So today, I just have a couple other questions um, for Eric. So Eric, um, you mentioned about this class and how they do the rotation and they have to, or they don't have to, but it, their only cost is to do dinners a couple of times. How many um, individuals are in the class at each time? I'd have to say the average is about 20 participants. Oh, okay, great. 20 participants um, and about 15 companies. Uh, we have, you know, sometimes they'll bring uh, an admin or the certified payroll person or a marketing person or their business development person, their sales person in the class. So I'd say on average, it is 20 people. Perfect, thank you for that. Um, also, what does Clark do to help build capacity? That is an excellent question, Maria. The capacity goes back to, you know, building capacity. We want to fortify small businesses and help them grow in every aspect. And so how do you grow in every aspect? You need to have a seller capability statement, you know, presentation skills that I went over, well-versed with insurance, bonding, licensing, um, and know how to have communication skills and know how to Go out there and sell yourself competitively, right? It's a competitive market. Just like when you're going for a job, a job interview, you know, you have to be on your A game and know history, know what you're talking about, and, and have a vision, more importantly, of where you want to go. And that is through our strategic partnership program that I mentioned, the 10-month MBA style course. We cover all these in depth. Um, we literally cover A to Z and, and Z through A in this class. Um, so I definitely look forward to Receive, uh, receiving emails about your interest. I'll put you on an interest list. And when the time comes to apply, come June or July in the summer, I can send you the direct link and apply. Um, if you, building capacity is your, goal, is your goal for your firm, which I think that's probably everyone's goal, right? In some way, shape, or form is um, this is not, you know, I'm not saying that's the only avenue, but it's definitely going to give you a very competitive advantage participating in this class to build capacity. Great. So yes, definitely. I think it would be a great idea for those that are interested to definitely attend that class. I mean, it seems like it's a long commitment, but it would be very beneficial. So I have another question. How does Clark let contractors know about opportunities? Well, they call me. <laughs> That's <laughs> one way. <laughs> you call me. You're going to be uh, a that... big man. <laughs> <laughs> I do nothing. You just call me. No, uh, Clark would fire me if they heard me say something like that. And, and that <laughs> it's got, they pay me to put myself out there, put the company out there, represent the company, right, and get the word out, you know, and meet the primes that you're doing right now. Uh, in my opinion, not just because Maria is a professional connection, but she, I consider her a, a personal friend. But Maria, I'm not just saying this because she's my friend, but. Meet the Primes, this is what we're doing right now. It's a prime example of how we get the word out. When we go to these events that Maria has held or, you know, school district, we go prepared. We, you know, I create a, a flyer of all the projects that we currently have 
the trades that have not been awarded that we have yet to award. And also on the flip side of that flyer, I put projects that we're bidding on. For example, uh, jobs that we're currently in the process of submitting uh, a proposal. To. So uh, that is one way. Um, and also building connected. I believe I touched briefly on that earlier. Building connected is a way where we can connect you to live projects and also have start having communication with um, our trade managers and engineers because there's a note section where I go in there and write, I met Sylvester Roofing, for example, uh, today, and they're small and they're women known. And I put those notes in, and those notes are universal. And any project manager, trade manager, engineer can see that. And that's another avenue that I think in the last two years, Clark has been transitioning to using Building Connected. That is another way. So it's through events, uh, networking functions where we go and meet all of you, um, you know, have a glass of wine, right? You know, those fun events that we all miss. You know, getting the word out there, we get to know you, you get to know us, um, and then building connected, being a more streamlined process and how to get the word out. Great. Thank you, Eric. And definitely, please make sure that everybody follows up with Eric if they want to connect. Um, I have one more question. What database do you use to connect contractors to projects? And I don't know if you already addressed that, but... That is, again, building connected. Mm -hmm. When you want to say, for example, if you're, your firm is interested in bidding on OTI Mesa and Aliac RSX projects, those are active projects, I go into the profile of each construction project, has a profile that we create and who's on that job as far as on Clark team. I search your firm up, for example, Sylvester Roofing. I link you to OTI and I link you to RSX. And that is how you're able to get uh, direct communication through internally from folks at Clark and get specs and drawings uh, emailed to you so you can review them to see if you are indeed are going, are interested and going to move forward in um, pursuing uh, one of these bids. Great. Thank you. Maria, if I might. Yes, of course. Um, Eric, did you address uh, where the training meetings are held? Oh, I did not. So the tra training meetings are for the classes at our right. Irvine office. Uh, in that at our Irvine office, and the address there, I don't know if you want to write it down. You can just Google it. It's 18201 uh, Von Carmen Avenue in Irvine. Uh, every Thursday from 6 to about 9 p.m. Right now, everything is virtual. Um, depending on what happens with COVID, right, we're hoping that a vaccine comes out and, or that, you know, things get better. If things do get better, our plan is to mid next year to go back to in person, but it all depends on, you know, how everything transpires. Um, but as even through COVID and all of that, our goal is to for sure next year, the next cohort, go back in person, not only for Irvine, um, we also have a Los Angeles um, location. Uh, last year we had it at a library, but that's not going to be permanent. So I'm not going to, you know, put that uh, until we find a permanent spot. But our goal is also to have um, our classes in person in San Diego office next fall um, at 525 B Street. I don't know if any of you have gone to our office downtown San Diego, uh, one of our networking functions, but that is our goal to have San Diego office, Irvine and Los Angeles up and running next fall. Hey, thank you. Yep. Thank you. That's exciting. I can't wait to hear that. So make sure that you keep us up to date as to when you go live on your classes in San Diego. And now, absolutely. I'm yes, go ahead, Eric. No, absolutely. And I uh, just, I'm excited to uh, get all the emails hopefully today and tomorrow that, you know, people are interested in applying. Yes, I'm sure you will. We'll have enough plenty of people interested. And so now I want to um, thank you all for participating in our presentation with Clark Construction. I want to remind everybody that um, our next presenter is Jacobs at four o'clock. I also want to go back and I want to touch before I do my closing remarks is um, on the screen you're seeing Jacobs at four. So that's who our next presenter is. 
Um, tomorrow we have a econ for all those professional services as well. And then we have airport concessions for those that are interested or if you know anybody that's interested in doing concessions at the airport, here is, you will be, it, this is gonna be a panel um, where we have primes with, that have partnered with some of our smaller businesses. So definitely we have two sessions, one from 11 to 12.30, and then a three to 4.30 for Thursday. And then next week we come back on Tuesday, November the 3rd, and that will be um, voting day. So don't forget everybody to go out and vote first or after our event is over, but um, make sure you do vote. And then um, that day is for all our airport departments. So a lot of information from our departments and opportunities and how to do business with us, what you need to do. So that's October 3rd. And then Wednesday, we have November, uh, I'm sorry, Wednesday, November 4th, we have our PAC agencies, our PAC member uh, partners that um, sometimes you have, would have met when you, if you have attended um, the buyers, meet the buyers. But at 10 o'clock, we will have um, a session with, I'm sorry, a session from 10 to 11.30 in the morning, and then a session from one to two o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, both sessions will, will open up with a small presentation. And then on, on our afternoon event, we will have two presentations, one to begin our session and another one to close our session, which is um, a great opportunity on businesses incentive credits. This is a company that's gonna be sharing with you, with everybody out there, uh, ways that there is government money out there somewhere. So make sure this is a, make sure you to attend. This is a great way to close our five day event. So what better way to show you how you could maybe get some money back for having your business. So please join us. And now I want to go ahead and um, also mention to you that we will be sending out a survey at the end of day five. Please take the time to complete it. Your honest feedback helps us improve planning these events. So we really want to hear from you. A special thank you to Clark for your excellent presentation tonight, today and our support team. We couldn't do these events without you guys. So you guys help us make it happen. We will be closing the session to set up for the next one, which starts at four o'clock. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.